Hey, you guys, you know what time it is. It's time to cut through the bull. We're going to sort through the mess. And when we get the facts straight, then we're going to what? Swipe left. Swipe left. Hello, you guys. Welcome again to Swipe Left. I am Milan Trejour. I am your hostess with the mostest. Today is February the 21st, and it's good to be with you. Listen, we got a lot of things that we're going to talk about. We're going to start off, I have some bad news. It's bad news. Truly a loss for all of us. Janet Dubois. passed this week. She was 74 years old. If you don't know who Janet Dubois is, you'll know Walona. Walona. Walona from Good Times. Baby, you talking about a diva? That's one of the first divas I think that any of us really actually remember. She was the diva of the project. Um, that character was always so hilarious to me. She was like the best dressed woman in the projects, her and Thelma, because I never understood that. They didn't have money, but they always, I know their mother used to make clothes for Thelma, but where'd she get the fabric? Then I just think maybe they thought, because Walona worked at a boutique, that maybe Thelma had some things for the boutique, but anyway, I'm getting off track, listen. But I'm boom, boom, bam, and I'm back, I off my soapbox. Janet Dubois played Walona, who was actually Penny's adoptive mother, which was played by Janet Jackson. She was a huge staple in that show who was not a part of the Evans family. You couldn't have the show without Janet Dubois. And she did a lot of other things. Um, there's a lot of people who don't realize that she is the one that actually sang the song for the Jeffersons. She's the one who was actually singing that song. So she has actually passed away. Definitely one of our treasures, one of our legends. Um, she has transitioned. Rest in peace, Janet Dubois. We are definitely going to miss you. Beautiful, beautiful black queen. And definitely, I think, the first diva that we met before Claire Huxtable. <laughs> so anyway, sad day. Sad day for all of us. All right, you guys. Swipe left. Okay, I have another piece of bad news. And I think it's bad. I don't, I don't know the people involved personally, um, but it's still bad news. Anytime that there is a life that is actually taken away, then it's bad news. It happens to be very controversial. There's a woman who was from Indianapolis who she was... Uh, Colorful woman, colorful. Um, what we would call like an around the way girl, you know, is the feel that we actually got from her. She ended up in a situation where being too real online, giving too much information turned deadly. It turned deadly. Um, in this case, she was at a position where she went to a house that she knew of and she had left her phone, her cell phone at the house. And she wasn't getting an answer for the house. She went back to the house. She made her way into the house. The door was unlocked. And when she got into the house, she actually discovered two males who were, you could consider down low brothers, were actually having sex. They were engaging in sex. And she had some things to say. She made her presence known. She had some things to say. She then, she told them, she gave them a time, actually. She threatened them with extortion in the amount of $5,000. She gave them a time and let them know that if they did not give her this $5,000, five stacks, as I told you, round the way, girl, five stacks is what she actually said, she was going to out them. 
on social media. She didn't get the money. She ended up going ahead and keeping her promise and getting on social media and blasting them, which we have talked about this in the past. It is always wrong to out anyone. I don't care if you're part of the community, the gay community, if you're outside of the gay community, outing a person is wrong and sometimes it does turn deadly. And this is why you, you've heard me say this a million times when these things come up, these situations, that you all have to stop doing this because it could potentially turn deadly and this time it did. She went ahead, like I said, went on the social media, blasted them, put their pictures out there, the two guys, put their pictures out there. She continued on. One of the guys, she actually had had a little sexual tryst with um, in the past. He wasn't her boyfriend. They weren't currently in relation or anything like that. It's someone who she said that he, they were business partners, basically. But she had uh, received oral sex from him in the past. And she best basically gave her disdain for the whole thing of what she's seen and what she now knew. She felt a sort of way about it. And she went on from there. She also uh, put out there that the two guys were cousins, which just made it even worse. Well, shortly thereafter, there was a car collision and a gunshot. And this woman perished. She perished. Now, the last that I've actually heard, there hasn't been an arrest made. Um, but, of course, we have two suspects. Uh, really, really unfortunate. Really unfortunate. Terrible that it's all happening on social media. She has a daughter. I hear that she has three daughters, allegedly. Um, one of the daughters is actually on social media and is making posts and it's just too involved it's too involved too much going on and it really is a situation where none of this is even necessary none of this was necessary mind your business that's that's the big thing that's the big lesson here mind your business Mind your business. One, he was not her boyfriend. I understand, you know, if if, if it, was, it was her boyfriend and or something like that. I just don't understand her position other than really, really, and I don't want to speak ill of the dead, but kind of being messy. You were being messy and trying to extort someone for cash. Um, if you're playing street games, a lot of times you'll have street results. And this is one of those times. This is one of those times. If she was doing business with this guy and she's known this guy for the past, you had to have known that at least the one that you knew was pretty much a deadly, a deadly character. So you had to have known what you were getting into. And I've told you all about this outing thing. It's never a good idea. It's never a good idea. The outcome is never good. And all she really had to do is mind her business. Mind her business. And she would still be here today. Possibly. Possibly. I mean, I just... The whole extortion thing and the whole outing thing, and it was very malicious. You know, and nobody deserves to lose their life. But again, every action has a reaction. And sometimes you don't want the reaction. You know, you, you just don't want the reaction. This was very unfortunate. I really hated this story. And it's not over. Because I, I don't think we've heard the last of it. Especially with this woman having children. And like I said, the one daughter is on social media and active. I don't think we've heard the last of this. This this is a horrible, horrible story. Horrible story. Um, I'm going to do what it is that I do. Like I said, I don't like the story, but I will definitely have my ear to the ground 
And when I hear more about it, I will come back and speak to you all about it. But this is definitely unfortunate. Uh, Somebody didn't mind their business. And now there are multiple lives that are forever going to be changed. Forever going to be changed. And it's so not worth it. So not worth it. I'm telling you, you all, one, mind your business. Two, this mess about this outing people. Just stop. Just stop it. Just stop. It always ends up bad. There's never a good ending to someone being out. Never. And I don't care if you're in the LGBTQIA community or if you're on the outside of the LGBTQIA community. It never ends well. Never. It never does. And this time it was dead. All right, you guys. Swipe left. Oh, boy. Come on in. Come closer for this next story. Come closer. Because this brings me to a saying that belongs to one of our favorites on the show, which is my girl Monique. So shout out to Monique. When you do clownery, sometimes the clown comes back to bite. Wendy! Wendy Williams. Here we go with you again. Here we go with you again. And your choice of words. Your choice of words. As if it wasn't a bad enough week for Wendy last week when she had all the issues with the LGBTQIA community and her choice of words as she had to apologize. She had to do it all over again. All over again. She sticks that great big old foot right back in her mouth again. This time, she's reporting on a story. Drew Carey, his ex-fiance, her name is Amy Harwick. This woman, unfortunately, met her demise at the hands of her ex-boyfriend, who literally murdered her. He threw her off of a balcony an outdoor balcony and she fell and perished and Wendy Williams is given the story and then throws in a tagline from The Price is Right. She says, come on down. Are you serious? Are you serious, Wendy? I don't know what's going on with Wendy. Something is definitely going on. There, Something's definitely going on. I mean, loose at the lips is an understatement. And I know there's times where I have a dark humor, and I understand that, and I try to conduct myself when I know when to and when not to. But uh, on the Wendy Williams show, something dark. Well, this that was just dark and just nasty. That was nasty and unnecessary and disrespectful. But really, come on down when you're reporting about a woman who literally perished from being thrown over a balcony. Come on, Wendy. Come on. See, I thought the little situation with the LGBTQIA community last week was uh, one that the apology meant nothing. There's nothing that Wendy could say about this situation that would make me feel any way other than disrespected. That was very, very heartless and disrespectful. I don't know what's going on with Wendy Williams, but I'm telling you, sis, if you want to continue to do your show, I'm going to give you a bit of advice to tell you, you need to pull it together. And I mean pull it together quickly because, girl, you're doing a whole lot. A whole lot. And your apologies are not going to keep hold of that. Because eventually you're going to get to the right group of folks and offend them. And it's not going to be pretty. At all. At all. I'm I'm just done with this. I am totally done with this. Just disrespectful. Swipe left. Okay. So, 
I need to go to something a little bit lighter because these first couple little stories have been just a bit heavy. Just a bit heavy, okay? Let's take a look at a photo. You know, I love, 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 love these photos. And you know, Swipe Left is really all centered around, the show is centered around things that I have run into that have caught my attention down on the internet streets throughout the week. And I was running through and I seen this photo. And it was Amazon packaging. Packaging is what we're going to talk about. Um, Amazon, are we just going cheap when we're doing our packaging? Or has discretion just gone to the wind? Take a look at this photo. Now, is there anybody is there anyone who doesn't know what that package is? And if you don't, how old are you? How old are you? And how sheltered have you been? I see this photo and I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. Who thought this was a good idea? Who, who thought that that was a good idea? Who thought that that was good packaging and that the person receiving it would be really, really happy with it? Well, I'm sure, that, listen, by all means, I'm sure the person who received the package is definitely happy with what it is that they actually received. And if you're not happy with it, then we really need to talk. I'd love to interview you right away. Right away, honey. Hit me in my inbox at spillitboy at gmail.com. I definitely would like to do an interview with you. But I, I, I just said, boy, discretion, I think, has just gone to the wind. And they're like, listen, we're packaging this as cheaply as possible. And to hell with what anybody thinks. Come on, Amazon. Get it together. Swipe left. Okay, guys. Thanks so much for being here. Check this out. This is a little video that I actually ran into throughout the week. Um, are you that friend that always kind of knows that something bad is sure to happen and you're just waiting? You're just waiting. I think that's, the, that's probably the YouTuber in me that you're just kind of waiting on that other shoe to drop. Sometimes we don't make the best friends. Take a look. Listen, the level of foolishness that was taking place in this apartment, the level of foolishness, and then the friend that was filming, I'm questioning your friendship because you knew. You knew at some point that other shoe was going to drop and you were completely here for it. Ooh. What kind of friend are you? What kind of friend are you? And he was so tickled. He was so tickled. Baby, she got tore down up in that corner, baby. That's a whole new meaning to, girl, get in the corner, honey. Get in the corner. A mess. All right, you guys, swipe left. Speaking of YouTubers, <laughs> let's talk about a few YouTubers, shall we? Okay, you know, 
I, I tell you all the time, I love what it is that I do. I am a, a true live YouTuber through and through. As much as I am a creator and I enjoy creating videos and coming up with new ideas for programming, um, such as Swipe Left, you know, I enjoy creating programming that belongs to me. <laughs> I, true new ideas and new creations. I enjoy all of that. True YouTuber. Um, and I also enjoy watching YouTube very much. So I watch just as much as I create, okay? One thing that always comes up about YouTube is Beef between creators is sometimes seen inevitable, okay? And there's always a thing of when you get to a certain level that you can't respond back, you just got to let things go and all of this kind of thing. And for some reason, people feel as though once you get so big that beef doesn't happen anymore. And eh, wrong, <laughs> wrong, wrong. It still happens. Listen, I was in my travels and I ran into two large YouTubers, pretty large YouTubers. And what were they doing? Beefing. Beefing. And I mean, just straight up beefing. Jason Lee. Of Hollywood Unlocked. You got it. Tasha K. <sighs> I can't even tell you how tickled I became when I ran across this. And I was like, hmm, take a look at this. How interesting. People with huge platforms. Listen, people are people. And sometimes there are issues and maybe they run head up and they run into each other and there's an issue. So I was pretty tickled about it. Um, what happened here was Jason Lee, if you didn't know, he actually has written a book and he's been on a book tour. So he's on his way to, I believe it was Washington, D.C. And he was going on the bus, you know, he... he took a bus ride to go and do this this appearance. And he ran into some folks, and you know how people are. People are always shady, and people always have something to say about something. So he's a large YouTuber and a large social media personality. Of course, he's been on Love and Hip Hop and all this. So when somebody's seen him on the bus, they had something to say about it, just like once you get to a certain level, you can't ride the bus anymore. I, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. it. You know, but whatever. So, of course, you know, Jason has a mouth on him, honey. So, Jason handled it all. But, old Tasha has a mouth on her, too. Tasha is a sheep. I, I call Tasha shop job. Tasha K who I am a fan. I'm a fan of both. I'm a fan of Jason Lee and Hollywood Unlocked, and I'm a fan of Tasha K as well. Tasha K doesn't have a problem saying what Tasha's thinking. And Tasha made some comments. You know, she's funny. That's what she does. She, she pokes fun and she drags and she does what she does. And she did a little bit of body shaming and she said what she had to say about Jason Lee, okay? And then Jason... In return, comes back. See, that's how beef starts. Jason turns back around and he says some things. He body shamed Tasha. He says some things about finances of Tasha's. Um, he brought out information about some past kerfuffles that Tasha has had. And therein lies this beef now between Jason Lee and Tasha K. And I just kind of just sat in awe. It was like, Oh, well, okay. And, and it just made me laugh because I am nowhere near the platform size of either one of them. And, you know, I'm one, I'm quick to 
baby, you start with me and I will grab you by your little bitty hairs on the side of your sideburns and drag you if need be. And there's some people that will say, you really shouldn't do that. Listen, I'm not even gonna disrespect you. That's just the way it is. And I guess Jason Lee and Tasha K felt the same way. And they have huge platforms. And baby, the beef was on, honey. I said, listen, get me some bread and an onion, honey. I want me a roast beef sandwich, baby, because I'm watching, honey. I'm not choosing sides. I don't really care who started it. I'm watching to see how it finishes, honey. It is going down in the YouTube streets with my Jason Lee and my Tosha K. And all I have for it is this, honey. Oh, my. So, <laughs> listen, go to their channels, honey. Check it out, honey. <laughs> anyway, Jason Lee and Tosha K, honey. Love you both, honey. I don't have a dog in the fight, but I'm watching. I'm watching. Swipe left. Okay, you guys, it is February, and with great pleasure, I take this moment to dedicate to Black History Month, and it's going to be done by Really B TV. So I'm turning it over. Take it away, Really B. Hello everybody, this is Really B TV. In your unsung Black History Moment this week, we'll be discussing the Deacons for Defense. The Deacons for Defense was started in Jonesboro, Louisiana in 1964 by Ernest Chili Willie Thomas and Frederick Douglass Kilpatrick. The Deacons for Defense was a precursor to um, organizations that we know of, such as the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense. They were started in the rural South, when a time when we would be led to believe that Southern Blacks didn't fight back and just accepted their... their um, things that were going on at that time, the Deacons for Defense organized themselves. They were mainly made up of uh, former World War II and Korean War veterans, and they served as protection for core organizer, organizers as well as African Americans wanting to register to vote or to integrate. The first affiliate chapter was organized in Bougalusa, Louisiana, and there was a very famous confrontation between the members of the Deacons for Defense and the Ku Klux Klan in that area. That um, confrontation led to national awareness, and it put a spotlight on Klan activity in the South, which eventually led to an FBI investigation. The Deacons were the first organized self-defense organization, and although they were not endorsed by the more popular civil rights organizations, such as the SCLC, because of their tactics, they uh, put the Ku Klux Klan on notice in the area of Louisiana where they um, policed that they would no longer be able to terrorize at will and that any act of aggression would be met with the equal act of aggression. The Deacons um, would patrol their areas, brandishing their guns, they would stay up all night, they would have snipers on the roofs, and they would protect the citizens of the areas in which they had chapters. It was a short-lived, and it was not a very well-publicized um, organization, and of course they were investigated by the FBI, but after the 1965 Watts riots, um, other organizations such as the Black Panther Party came to more prominent um, national awareness and the, the deacons sort of fell off. But for the people who lived in those areas, they are very much um, remembered and people know the significance of the deacons for defense. There was a movie made and I believe it was 2003, don't quote me on the year, um, starring Forrest Whitaker that would give you more information on the deacons for defense. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Thank you so much, Really Be TV. On behalf of Spill It Boy TV, we thank you. We thank you for your contribution to the show. Thank you again, Queen. That was Really Be TV. Make sure you guys take time and go over to her YouTube channel. Subscribe and check her out. Check her out. Swipe left. Okay, another little story that maybe not so little of a story that has been really buzzing in the streets this week for about a week and a half actually is Dwayne Wade 
and his daughter, Zaya. And that right there has been the issue, Zaya. Zaya was born Zion, okay? So, Dwayne Wade and his wife, Gabrielle Union, have completely embraced the fact that Zaya, formerly known as Zion, has embraced her place in the LGBTQIA community. The thing has been is that Zaya is, at this time, only 12. The first thing that we saw that was going on is when they actually, as a couple, they, um, they embraced the fact that the child was embracing her part in the community. And Gabrielle actually escorted the child to the Pride Parade. They took the child to the Pride Parade. And it was a big deal, big ordeal with people, you know, there were people who agreed and people who didn't agree. Well, again, that that happens because they live in the public eye. So now there's this whole thing where Dwayne Wade has this documentary coming out and he is going to speak about Zion becoming Zaya and the fact that they have embraced and I don't want to say embrace. They've acknowledged. They've acknowledged Zaya's position as trans and her name change. And they're on board with it. And there are people who are completely upset. For one, Zaya's biological mother is not in agreement with it. And the age seems to be the huge issue here. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine this 12-year-old child having to actually deal with this. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot. Because you have people who are just saying, being as though it's social media and they live so publicly, there are people who are really saying some things that are just so out there. Little Boosie actually came out with this video and just vulgar. Very vulgar, um, pretty much an attack on Dwayne Wade, all about, he kept referring to cutting off the child's genitalia. Well, this is the thing. This is the thing. Dwayne and Gabrielle are not crazy. I know that they knew they were going to meet a lot of issues when they came out with this publicly. But some of this stuff is just ridiculous. Lil Boosie was ridiculous because one, nobody said anything about gender reassignment surgery. Gender reassignment surgery is the last step of becoming a trans woman or trans man. It is the last step, okay? They didn't say anything about that. They didn't even talk about hormone therapy. Before you even get to hormone therapy, there's counseling that has to actually take place. So all I heard them talk about was the acknowledgement of the trans position and the name change. That's all I've heard them actually talk about so far. And little Boosie was taking this stance of what about if the child by 16 decides to fall in love with a girl and then you've already cut off the... Little Boosie, nobody said anybody would... And first of all, it's not a cut off. So you're just ignorant. You're just ignorant. And before you jump on social media and make a fool of yourself, you need to educate yourself before you go on out attacking people, talking about things that you obviously don't really know about. Um, the public scrutiny, I, it was gonna come, but come on, the ignorance is just a whole mess. 12 is very young. Um, by the time I was 12, I knew my position 
and the LGBTQIA spectrum. I knew for a fact, I knew my position. So, no, I'm not going to say, and I've listened to Zaya speak. Honey, I think Zaya knows pretty well her position. But Zaya has time to change her mind. She does have time to change her mind. It's not going to happen next Saturday that she'll be into a whole gender reassignment and all of that. That is what there, there's a whole process that goes along with being trans. A whole process. And she is a little girl who actually has parents who can actually afford for her to actually go through the process the way the process is intended. Not black market, not skipping anything. Dwayne Wade can afford for Zaya to go through counseling and then if she decides to continue on, go through hormone therapy and then if she decides to go ahead and transition all the way over to be able to do gender reassignment. I don't, any of that is not going to be a problem for Zaya. So, I don't understand why everybody is so up in arms. And it's not your child. It's not your child. Everybody makes their own decisions about how they choose to raise their child. Now, again, when you do it publicly, you have to deal with the backlash and the scrutiny. But just the, the, the level of ignorance, I just can't. I can't. I can't. It, it, it's just, that whole little boosie thing was just ridiculous to me. But it's not, folks, chill out. Chill out. It's not going to happen next Saturday, okay? It's not going to happen and be done next Saturday. So, you know, there, there's time for Zaya to actually grow and, 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 and see if this is really the way that she is going to live the rest of her life. It's not going to happen next Saturday. That's all I have to say about it for now. For now. Because we'll be talking about Zaya. Hey, but Zaya is one smart cookie. I'll tell you that. I've seen her and I've seen her speak. And one smart, smart little girl. Anyway, swipe left. Let's do a fashion moment, shall we? This been It's been really deep. We've been pretty deep in here today. Let's do a fashion moment, shall we? Okay. Billy Porter. Billy Porter, Billy Porter, Billy Porter. Okay, so we all know what Billy Porter did. Billy Porter does the whole gender screw thing, okay? Billy might have on a skirt and a, a tuxedo top and it, you know, that's Billy. But Billy pulled this little outfit together and I was like, all right, all right. Because, you know, at first, when Billy Porter first started hitting the red carpets regularly, he was killing it, killing it, killing it. And then there's been a couple misses. There have been a couple misses in here lately. There was like, there was the one gown that I really didn't like. It was kind of, I didn't like it. And then some things were like, oh, okay, you know. But this one, I was like, whoop, Billy, you got my eye again. And, though, and, and know that I love Billy Porter. So whatever he does, it's, I'm, I'm here for it. But again, ups and downs. There's been a couple misses here. But check out this one. Baby, let me tell you something. This whole, that purple blouse screams couture with this little nervous feather. Couture. Baby, the hat screams drama. Drama. Complete drama. Everything. I said, stop. Come on here, Billy. And then those leather gloves. And look, this purse that you pay me that little <laughs> yes Billy Porter but listen this is what I thought of first when I see it and this was actually I believe this was 
his outfit going to a Grammy after party. See, I was not, I wasn't so crazy about the Grammy outfit. But baby, this after party outfit was mm, mm, good. You understand me? But listen, this is what it made me think of. The glove, the top, and the hat put me right in mind of Janet Jackson 24 play. Do you remember Janet Jackson 24 play, her video that was a nod to Dorothy Dandridge? It's a beautiful black and white video. Just the moment of the blouse and the gloves and the hat, but you can take the hat away. The blouse and the gloves put me right in that whole feel of that 24 play video. I absolutely adored this. This was definitely a fashion moment for me. And thank you, Chloe Porter. Swipe left. Okay. <laughs> See, y'all know I'm on some bull bull crap right now. Before I even get started, I'm on some old bull crap. I want you to take a look at this video, okay? Now, this is what I've been told is the new 30 plus pumps review. This is what it gives when you get 30 plus. This is what pumps are given 30 plus. Check it out. <laughs> Somebody's lying. Somebody is lying. I am 48 and baby, I will not be caught dead in those. I am not playing around with those shoes. Do you understand me? I will not be having an Iola boiling moment. And I'm 18 years past where they say that that's the 30 plus uh, pumps review. No, baby. I'm 18 years past it, and I'm not having me a Needle Myers moment. Do you understand me? Not at all. Baby, when she got to breaking it down, I said, you are clowning up in this store. <laughs> I really enjoyed that, and I hope you all did. <laughs> Any swipe left. All right, you guys. Listen, this has been a bunch of fun. A bunch of fun with you all, as usual. But um, earlier on, we actually talked about YouTube and being a YouTuber and, and, and beefing, you know, a little beefing. And sometimes you run into a beef where you don't see eye to eye with some, sometimes it's your subbies and sometimes you don't see eye to eye with another content creator. <laughs> okay. So I ran across this, this photo and as adorable as it is, as adorable as it is, baby, it is me, 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 all day, all day. This is 
my existence down here on the YouTube streets. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank you guys for hanging out. Listen, this has been Swipe Left. Like I said, I am your hostess with the mostest, Milan Trezor, often imitated, never duplicated. I'll see you guys next week. Take care. <laughs>